I am here today with uh, members of the IMO team of Malaysia. It is an absolute pleasure to have you right here, Mr. Jaron Wong and also Mr. Daryl Lee right here. Congratulations, by the way, on your recent win uh, of medals for every single member of the Malaysian IMO team. It's a historical achievement and we're just tremendously proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It is really a it's really a great pleasure for my last year for everyone to get a medal because that hasn't been happening in this last 30 years. Last and 30 years. Yeah, it hasn't. We have participated since like for almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time this is happening. I'm glad that it's at my end. So we have a beautiful ending. <laughs> <laughs> they have a beautiful opening. How do you feel about the, the IMO? I know that you've done it like maybe like five times so far. Um, and maybe in your case, like you did it just like once, I think. I think like preparing for the competition was initially pretty stressful but like once you get there you realize that there's a lot of people there and you can have lots of fun mm -hmm. and the competition itself was pretty tough but in the end I'm happy with what I got so yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and what about yourself? Thank you so much. I feel like before the IMO it's very tempting to feel like the key essence of IMO lies in the contest, in the five medals, for example. Mm -hmm. But then, after everything is over, you start to have the clarity that everything you remember is just the memories rather than the medals hanging there in some box in their home. Well, all right. Now, I'd like you to talk a little bit about, well, the whole full medal achievement. What's it mean to you guys that the entire Malaysia team received a medal this time around? In general, what I'm seeing is that based on the previous few years, the Malaysian performance is very reliant on some sort of talent-ish. As in, once in a while we have some spikes. In 2014, we have two gold medals. And then we had a pause in gold medals for a very, very long time until 2022, mm -hmm. where Jisong got another one. And 2023, 2024, you have two more, I believe. Oh, wait, Jisong got into 2021. There's some facts about that. But then we had a long period of time where we didn't have any gold medals. Mm -hmm. And Malaysia, historically, if we check IMO score, or we check the APMO, which is Asia Pacific Math Olympiad, some um, smaller kind of but similar contest, we see that in Malaysia, the score difference, as in we take the max score minus the minimum score, it's among the highest compared to all the other countries. Wow. Right. So it's like, a very strong disparity between um, the students. So some of them are very strong, but then once we get into um, five or four more students, we have a sudden drop in scores in some way. But right now it's like everyone has medals. It's a very huge like um, milestone for us that's saying that Malaysia as general is going to rise up instead of just a few students that's rising. So that's like what I'm glad that has happened in my final year before I leave. I see, wow, cool. Okay. And I think it was your first uh, IMO, right? So then, like, you've got uh, so much more to uh, build upon right here. <laughs> so, like, um, kind of like moving forward, I mean, like, how do you feel about this achievement right here? I think it's like a very nice, like, thing that could show what the possibilities are. Like, mm -hmm. next year, hopefully, I'll be aiming for more. And I have a few more years to come, mm -hmm. hopefully. Amazing, cool. Thank you so much for that. Now, um, so, Jaren, of the five different trials or like the five different instances in which you participated in the IMO, um, you receive a medal every single time. Some might call you a legend, some might call you like uh, an inspiration. I do know like a couple of nerds out there who are watching this who probably will be looking at your name right there and then just be all like, oh my gosh, it is Jaren, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably, they, they, they may be crying right there. They may be like staring obsessively at pictures of you or something of that nature. Totally not with face though. But so you're hit up to MIT and uh, you've clearly studied like math for a very big part um, really of like your competition career and everything of that nature. Yeah. So kind of moving forward, you know, like with all these um, achievements and like memories, as you did say, it's not just about medals, of which you have five, uh, but also lots of travel memories as well. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you would like to do maybe um, in the days ahead, whether related to math or not related to math? So the first thing that I want to do is to explore, mm. actually, because most of my childhood, or until which I started Olympiad at 10, and it hasn't been lasting for almost a decade, mm. most of the time I spent 
almost everything into math itself and math olympiad all right that's as nearly as it sounds <laughs> but then um math olympiad the thing about it is that even though it has been a very rewarding experience for me i've made a lot of connections just like just now mm -hmm. and as well as all the friends i've met in the imo but at the same time it has exhausted a lot of time mm -hmm. so that's because for example imo three questions four and a half hours and sometimes you can't even solve a single one at the beginning right so you spend a lot of time doing the training and because of that i believe that i've lost quite a few opportunities to explore some other stuff right for example i'm slightly interested in ai psychology philosophy but i'm totally not um profit uh pro proficient in any of them mm. since i've been like spending all my time in math so the first thing that I want to do is like to just see the outside world more mm -hmm. and to see like decide what I want to do in the future, mm -hmm. right? And that's why I went to MIT compared to um, the UK, where mm -hmm. in the UK it's very likely that I'm gonna be close in the math cave for for another four years. I see. Right. <laughs> All right. Cool. So thank you for that. Um, Daryl, you're currently sitting next to um, a legendary IFO performer right here, and um, yeah, so like even earlier, uh, but we had even a whole flag handover ceremony, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was kind of like you know you were passing on the uh, shall we say, yeah, the yoke to the next generation. I don't know if you would call it a responsibility, but certainly you know maybe that um, flag receiving thing had like some significance to you. So how do you feel about that? Um, maybe there might be a bit of pressure because, like, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's difficult, if not impossible, <laughs> to live up to German standards. But I'll try my hardest. Um, mm -hmm. I guess that's the most important thing. <laughs> um, I guess there's like there's some responsibility mm -hmm. to make sure that Malaysia does well. Mm -hmm. But like throughout my entire journey, I'll make sure that I'll still view math as a passion. Wonderful, cool. Thank you so much for that. Although at different stages, um and in different ways. Uh, both of you are still uh, representing Malaysia in some sense. Um, and perhaps all of us are, right? Um, <laughs> viewers of this channel or otherwise, when you go out there, you speak to people, you know, you are in some sense representing Malaysia. So I'd like to ask maybe in a, a sort of like philosophical sense, uh, maybe let's start with you, uh, Daryl, if you could. What does representing Malaysia mean to you? Because you have been essentially on that stage, you were on that podium, you received medals in front of like the entire crowd in Bath, England. And so when you think about that, well, idea of representing the country, um, what's that mean to you? Um, even though Malaysia hasn't been getting number one uh, in the past, I feel like it's like letting the world know that there are talents in Malaysia and there are, it's like the, there's going to be a large STEM community in Malaysia that can do a lot. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And Jaren, as you go on to MIT, you will also be representing Malaysia, one of its historically most awarded math competitors, um, and also a student that essentially your school is proud of, your parents are tremendously proud of, and that our country is also tremendously proud of. So as you kind of um, take on these kinds of hopes and uh, dreams, we can say almost. I'm just imagining like the spirit form of this <laughs> <laughs> right So how do you feel about uh, that prospect of well, representing Malaysia on the MIT stage? I see. So representing Malaysia in a personal sense is great for to remind myself to actually behave in some way because knowing that my action has consequences and this is infecting the reputation of the country. But I find like one way more important aspect is the connection between all Malaysians. Mm -hmm. So back in my time, oh, okay, so I, I sound old now. Back in my days. <laughs> What's the box of time? <laughs> okay, I'm which way would the you <laughs> You're a baby. Right. That was I was when I was 13. Like, I do look up to a, to a lot of Malaysians, for example, Enzo, um, Ivan, Jisong. And of course, there are like amazing people who have achieved amazing stuff. For example, the Chinese perfect scorers that has been there every year in the IMO. But we don't look up so much towards them. They feel so different. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I look up to Zizong and Enzo, they feel like an inspiration to us because we grow up from the same environment. And it shows us like what our potential can be, just like what Dario said. Malaysia has talents as well and has the right training. 
mm-hmm. and with the right effort, we can achieve what we want. So to me, it's like rather than representing country, I feel like it's. I hope to send a signal for the future generations that mm-hmm. they could achieve not just what I could achieve, but way more than what I can. So I hope that just to set a bar that this is what you can achieve, but definitely you can achieve you can achieve more. Amazing, cool. Right. Um, thank you so much for that. Thank you for that. Um, you have been handled a great trust um, show like from your senior right here. So I mean, yeah, like how would you respond to that as somebody who is well? You said to like the next generation kind of thing, but you're part of the current generation, and in turn, like you will no doubt go on to inspire like others who will come after you as well. So, like when you kind of like listen to what Jaron has said earlier, so like how do you feel about that and like just immediately speaking, like how would you respond to it? I think um, the training in Malaysia is getting better, so the talents are getting stronger, and so hopefully in the near future we might actually. Um, surpass the records that uh, Jaren has set. Okay. In fact, um, the Malaysian flag, of like passing that Malaysian flag down to it, is not just the spirit, but actually just to make sure that this flag is not just a one-time wonder. Like this appeared on the gold medal stage twice. It's not just happening for one time and waiting for a few, another decade for that to happen. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, and thank you for your contributions towards uh, Malaysia as well. We are all tremendously proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. No way. All good. Yeah, I'm the good. universe is uh, chill. Oh, you're in a moment. We're happy, amazing, great. Everything is just the fate. Mm-hmm. It'll happen anyway. It's a simulation, you said. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, let's go. If, um, <laughs> if members of the IMO team are telling me this right here, <laughs> uh, the people most tailored towards like rationality and like basically methods of proof in the entirety of Malaysia right here just tell me that fate exists. You believe in fate, uh, Daryl? Um, sure. <laughs> no, because he said it. Just <laughs> what? Convinced by authority. Convinced by authority. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Ha ha ha.